Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about how my locals in Williamsburg, Virginia, where I went to grad school, how they it went bankrupt. I had bankrupt four different times. Uh, it used to be called Groovy Geckos, and then it was called Phoenix Games, then it was called Phoenix Games Reborn, and then it just wasn't called anything because it bankrupt for the last time. So essentially what happened was you had, it should have been very successful because it was the only uh, game store, the only game store in all of Williamsburg. Uh, you had a sports, uh, the, the other store only sold sports cards pretty much and they had, didn't have room to play Friday Night Magic. I did go there once to play EDH with the guys and it was really fun, but it couldn't, it honestly was just four people and if you had any more than four people, it probably wouldn't work out. And I think I found them on Facebook or something. But the store that we went to was a very small store. Uh, it cost $800 to rent a month. Uh, so you can imagine that, that was a very small, it was kind of smelly, the bathroom was never working, or if it did work, uh, it kind of didn't work, if you know what I mean. And the storage actually was next to the bathroom. So for whatever reason, they kept like all the valuable stuff in the back and it would occasionally flood. Maybe they were trying to get insurance money. I'm not sure what was happening, but the people there were really great. And I think um, it's a good group of guys and gals. And yes, there were actually was one female magic player out of the seven or eight that normally played there. And it was a good time but essentially no one purchased any product. And what happened was the store owner made the decision that he wanted to buy Warhammer, lots of Warhammer. So you have two issues here. You have one issue of him buying Warhammer. If you know Warhammer, I used to play, it, is once you buy your set, you pretty much don't need to buy another set. I mean, buying your initial set is very, very expensive, but then um, you don't, need to continue to buy more and more. It's not like booster packs, which is very easy. So it will stay on the store shelves for as long as, you know, the store is open. Uh, it just is not movable. And, you know, you will talk to any store owner and, and the Warhammer is just a very interesting dynamic between the distributor, the company, and then the store, which makes it, you know, whatever. I, it's not going to get into that, but one of the reasons they went bankrupt was Warhammer just didn't move. The second reason was they kind of excluded some types of players, and I don't know why that is. Um, but you know, they had some players they favored, and then they had some players they didn't. And then the last reason, and I think the most important reason, which I'm going to get into a separate video altogether, is that there was a very toxic player. And I'm not talking about like a mega shark or any of that type of, um, you know, that's different. That in my opinion, uh, back then, if you had a mega shark with you or a great white shark or something, you know, sharking cage, which means, you know, uh, there's a trade difference. So I'm trading a $5 card for your $10 card and I'm putting pressure on you to do it. So that's sharking. And that used to be more prevalent back then before, you know, smartphones, even, you know, when you had smartphones, the data plan wasn't very large. So you couldn't always check out the price. And these signal towers were terrible back then, even with Verizon, especially in such a small uh, town like Williamsburg. But uh, back to the issue of, um, you know, you can have that and that can, you can still survive that. But what you cannot survive is you cannot survive with someone who's extremely negative. So we had this one dude, and this was before uh, where I didn't have as large of a collection as I do today. Um, and I didn't have the money to buy anywhere close to the collection I have today. But he would just you know, bring in his foil jaces, his crimp. He was really into crimped cards, like, um, which is like, uh, I, I, didn't, I don't ever like those type of cards, but some people do. And he would bring in, you know, such so much value. And he knows that like no one has a value to trade it. And then he would just, uh, use it as almost an ego boost every time and he would like say oh I got this card from here I got this card from this I spent you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars on magic cards and but we, we knew he didn't spend that money but he he, he had a really good collection uh, but he would have to um, 
create this image that you know he had a hundred thousand dollar collection or something and it was all in this safe which uh, we never believed him but maybe it was true so uh, what happened was it just created a very negative feel um, because you have one person who believes because they own a large collection they should win every single game and when they don't win every single game they just have a fit and this player uh, was just very very toxic and not fun to be around because um, uh, and for a lack of better terms it was as if um, somehow having a large collection and showing it off and bringing it to store every single Friday Night Magic when no one had anything to trade into. Uh, I remember, remember at the time he had a playset of foil Jaces, uh, the Mind Sculptor, uh, which at that time was like $600, $700. And no one had even, like my trade binder, my entire binder combined with my friend's binder combined with my other friend's binder wasn't even equal to one Jace. So I don't really, I didn't really see the point of him bringing it all the time. But you know, that is what it is. And his EDH decks were just outrageous. Uh, so, you know, you have a dynamic where um, a person is coming into the store and they're using the store really to uh, increase their ego and um, somehow they've made this connection, which is not true, and this connection should not be made, that if you have more valuable magic cards or you have more magic cards, it automatically makes you a bad player. Therefore, like him losing in standard draft or specialty draft, where everything is kind of even and a little random, is like preposterous he couldn't get it and he would just throw his you know draft deck at people and at literally people little children i remember there was um a kid who was like eight years old and he would just throw the de draft deck at the kid and it would actually hit him i'm not saying like he throws it near him like and it was just like outrageous it was like behavior that you couldn't like you had to be there and i really wish that like i'm um, not that wish i would kind of if I had my YouTube channel back then, I would definitely record like that because it was just outrageous. Uh, but that was the main reason the store went bankrupt. Because when you have one person and there's only eight people to begin with, uh, who is just so toxic and so negative and um, just so egotistic, it really can drag down the whole store. And that's why they bankrupt like four different times because they tried to restructure. They restructured it financially. They restructured different partners. They did all this stuff that would have helped and the fact that they were the only store in a very large college town should have meant they were going to be extremely profitable but it meant the exact opposite because you had this very toxic player that just kept away everyone else anyway bye guys